Chapter 2 Biological Classification Since the dawn of civilization, there have been many attempts to classify living organisms. It was done instinctively not using criteria that were scientific but born out of a need to use organism for our own use, for food, shelter and clothing. Aristotle was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification. He used simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs and herbs. He also divided animals into two groups, those which had red blood and those that did not. In Linnaeus time, a two kingdom classification system with plantae and animalia kingdoms was developed that included all plants and animals respectively. This system did not distinguish between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes, unicellular and multicellular organisms, and photosynthetic that is green algae and non-photosynthetic that is fungi organisms. Classification of organisms into plants and animals was easily done and was easy to understand, but a large number of organisms did not fall into either category. Hence, a two-kingdom classification used for a long time was found inadequate. Besides cross morphology, a need was also felt for including other characteristics like cell structure, nature of wall, mode of nutrition, habitat, methods of reproduction, evolutionary relationship, etc. Classification systems for the living organism have hence undergone several changes over the time. Though plant and animal kingdoms have been a constant under all different systems, the understanding of what groups or organisms be included under these kingdoms have been changing. The number and nature of other kingdoms have also been understood differently by different scientists over the time. Table 2.1 Characteristics of the Five Kingdoms Characters Cell Type Prokaryotic in Monera, Eukaryotic in Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia Cell Wall Non-cellulosic polysaccharide plus amino acid in Monera Present in some in Protista Present with chitin in fungi, present with cellulose in plantae, and absent in animalia. Nuclear membrane, absent in monera, and present in protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Body organization, cellular in monera and protista, and multicellular or loose, loose tissue in fungi, tissue or organ in plantae, and tissue organ or organ system in animalia. Mode of nutrition, autotrophic, chemosynthetic and photosynthetic and heterotrophic, saprophytic and parasitic in monera, autotrophic, photosynthetic and heterotrophic in protista, heterotrophic, saprophytic or parasitic in fungi, autotrophic, photosynthetic in plantae and heterotrophic, holozoic or saprophytic in animalia. R.H. Whitaker, 1969 proposed a five kingdom classification. The kingdoms defined by him were named Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. The main criteria for classification used by him include cell structure, thallus organization, mode of nutrition, reproduction and phylogenetic relationships. Table 2.1 gives a comparative account of different characteristics of the five kingdoms. Let us look at this five kingdom classification to understand the issues and consideration that influence the classification system. Earlier, classification systems included bacteria, blue-green algae, fungi, mosses, ferns, gymnosperms and the angiosperms under plants. The character that unified this whole kingdom was that all the organisms included had a cell wall in their cells. This placed together groups which widely differed in other characteristics. It brought together the prokaryotic bacteria and the blue-green algae with other groups which were eukaryotic. It also grouped together the unicellular organisms and the multicellular ones, say, for example, Clamidomonas and Spirogyra were placed together under algae. 
The classification did not differentiate between the heterotrophic group fungi and the autotrophic green plants, though they also showed a characteristic difference in their walls composition. The fungi had chitin in their walls, while the green plants had a cellulosic cell wall. When such characteristics were considered, the fungi were placed in a separate kingdom, kingdom fungi. All prokaryotic organisms were grouped together under kingdom monera and the unicellular eukaryotic organisms were placed in kingdom protista. Kingdom protista has brought together Chlamydomonas, chlorella, which was earlier placed in algae within plants and both having cell walls, with paramecium and amoeba, which were earlier placed in the animal kingdom, which lack cell wall. It has put together organisms which in earlier classification were placed in different kingdoms. This happened because the criteria of classification changed. This kind of changes will take place in future too, depending on the improvement in our understanding of characteristics and evolutionary relationships. Over time, an attempt has been made to evolve a classification system which reflects not only the morphological, physiological and reproductive similarities, but is also phylogenetic, that is, is based on evolutionary relationships. In this chapter, we will study characteristics of Kingdom Monera, Protista and Fungi of the Whittaker system of classification. The kingdom Plantae and Animalia, commonly referred to as plant and animal kingdoms, respectively will be dealt with separately in chapter 3 and 4. 2.1 Kingdom Monera Bacteria are the sole members of the kingdom Monera. They are the most abundant microorganisms. Bacteria occur almost everywhere. Hundreds of bacteria are present in a handful of soil. They also live in extreme habitats such as hot springs, deserts, snow and deep oceans where very few other life forms can survive. Many of them live in on other organisms as parasites. Bacteria are grouped together under four categories based on their shape, the spherical coccus, the road shaped bacillus, the coma shaped vibrium and the spiral spiralum. Though the bacterial structure is very simple, they are very complex in behavior. Compared to many other organisms, bacteria as a group show the most extensive metabolic diversity. Some of the bacteria are autotrophic that is, they synthesize their own food from inorganic substrates. They may be photosynthetic autotrophic or chemosynthetic autotrophic. The vast majority of the bacteria are heterotrophs that is, they do not synthesize their own food but depend on the other organisms or on dead organic matter for food. 2.1.1 Archaea Bacteria These bacteria are special since they live in some of the most harsh habitats such as extreme salty areas, halophiles, hot springs, thermoacidophiles, and marshy areas, methanogens. Archaebacteria differ from other bacteria in having a different cell wall structure and this feature is responsible for their survival in extreme conditions. Methanogens are present in the gut of several ruminant animals such as cows and buffaloes and they are responsible for the production of methane that is biogas from the dung of these animals. 2.1.2 Eubacteria there are thousands of different eubacteria or true bacteria. They are characterized by the presence of a rigid cell wall and if motile, a flagellum. The cyanobacteria, also referred to as blue-green algae, have chlorophyll A similar to green plants and are photosynthetic autotrophs. The cyanobacteria are unicellular, colonial or filamentous, freshwater or marine or terrestrial algae. The colonies are generally surrounded by a gelatinous sheath. They often form blooms in polluted water bodies. Some of these organisms can fix, fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocysts, for example, nostoc and anabena. Chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates, nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for their ATP production. 
they play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iron and sulfur heterotrophic bacteria are the most abundant in nature the majority are important decomposers many of them have a significant impact on human affairs they are helpful in making curd from milk production of antibiotics fixing nitrogen in legumes roots etc some are pathogens causing damage to human beings crops farm animals and pets cholera typhoid tetanus citrus canker are well known diseases caused by different bacteria bacteria reproduce mainly by fission as in figure 2.3 sometimes under unfavorable conditions they produce spores they also reproduce by a sort of sexual reproduction by adopting a primitive type of dna transfer from one bacterium to the other the mycoplasma are organisms that completely lack a cell wall they are the smallest living cells known and can survive without oxygen many mycoplasma are pathogenic in animals and plants 2.2 kingdom protista all single celled eukaryotes are placed under protista but the boundaries of this kingdom are not well defined what may be a photosynthetic protistin to one biologist may be a plant to another in this book we include chrysophytes dinoflagellates euglenoids slime molds and protozoans under protista members of protista are primarily aquatic this kingdom forms a link with the others dealing with plants animals and fungi being eukaryotes the protistin cell body contains a well defined nucleus and other membrane bound organelles some have a flagella or cilia protist reproduced mainly asexually and sexually by a process involving cell fusion and zygote formation 2.2.1 chrysophytes this group includes diatoms and golden algae that is desmids they are found in fresh water as well as in marine environments they are microscopic and float passively in water currents planktons most of them are photosynthetic in diatoms the cell walls form two thin overlapping shells which fit together as in a soap box the walls are embedded with silica and thus the walls are indestructible thus diatoms have left behind large amounts of cell wall deposits in their habitat this accumulation over billion of years is referred to as diatomaceous earth being gritty this soil is used in polishing filtration of oils and syrups diatoms are the chief producers in the oceans 2.2.2 dinoflagellates these organisms are mostly marine and photosynthetic they appear yellow green brown blue or red depending on the main pigments present in their cells the cell wall has a stiff cellulose plates on the outer surface most of them has two flagella one lies longitudinally and the other transversely in a furrow between the wall plates very often red dinoflagellates for example gonaculax undergo such rapid multiplic multiplication that they make the sea appear red that causes red tides toxins released by such large numbers may even kill the other marine organisms such as fishes 2.2.3 euglenoids majority of them are freshwater organisms found in stagnant water instead of cell wall they have a protein rich layer called pellicle which makes their body flexible they have two flagella a short and a long one though they are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight when deprived of sunlight they behave like heterotrophs by predating on other smaller organisms interestingly the pigments of euglenoids are identical to those present in higher plants for example euglena in figure 2.4a 2.2.4 slime molds slime molds are saprophytic protists 
The body moves along decaying twigs and leaves engulfing organic material. Under suitable conditions, they form an aggregation called plasmodium which may grow and spread over several feet. During unfavorable conditions, the plasmodium differentiates and forms fruiting bodies bearing spores at their tips. The spores possess true walls. They are extremely resistant and survive for many years, even under adverse conditions. The spores are dispersed by air currents. 2.2.5 Protozoans All protozoans are heterotrophs and live as predators or parasites. They are believed to be primitive relatives of animals. There are four major groups of protozoans. First, amoeboid protozoans. These organisms live in fresh water, sea water, and moist soil. They move and capture their prey by putting out pseudopodia, that is, false feet, as in amoeba. Marine forms have silica shells on their surface. Most of them, such as entamoeba, are parasites. Second, flagellated protozoans. The members of this group are either free living or parasitic. They have flagella. The parasitic forms cause diseases such as sleeping sickness, example, trypanosoma. Third, ciliated protozoans. These are aquatic, actively moving organisms because of the presence of thousands of cilia. They have a cavity, that is gullet, that opens to the outside of the cell surface. The coordinated movement of rows of cilia causes the water laden with food to be stirred into the gullet. Example, Paramecium. Fourth, sporozoans. This includes diverse organisms that have an infectious spore like stage in their life cycle. The most notorious is Plasmodium, that is, Marillier parasite, which causes malaria, a disease which has a staggering effect on human population. 2.3 Kingdom Fungi. The fungi constitute a unique kingdom of heterotrophic organisms. They show a great diversity in morphology and habitat. When your bread develops a mold or your orange rose, it is because of fungi. The common mushroom you eat and toadstools are also fungi. White spots seen on the mustard leaves are due to a parasitic fungus. Some unicellular fungi, that is yeast, are used to make bread and beer. Other fungi cause diseases in plants and animals. Wheat rust causing Paxenia is an important example. Some are the source of antibiotics, that is penicillin. Fungi are cosmopolitan and occur in air, water, soil, and on animals and plants. They prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Have you ever wondered why we keep our food in the refrigerator? Yes, it is to prevent food from growing bad due to bacterial or fungal infections. With the exception of yeast, which are unicellular, fungi are filamentous. Their bodies consist of long, slender, thread-like structures called hyphae. The network of hyphae is known as mycelium. Some hyphae are continuous tubes filled with multinucleated cytoplasm. These are called cenocytic hyphae. Others have septae or cross walls in their hyphae. The cell walls of fungi are composed of chitin and polysaccharides. Most fungi are heterotrophic and absorb soluble organic matter from dead substrates and hence are called saprophytes. Those that depend on living plants and animals are called parasites. They can also live as symbionts in association with algae as lichens and with roots of higher plants as mycorrhiza. Reproduction in fungi can take place by vegetative means, fragmentation, fission and budding. Asexual reproduction is by spores or conidia or sporangiospores or zoospores and sexual reproduction is by oospores, ascospores and basidiospores. The various spores are produced in distinct structures called fruiting bodies. The sexual cycle involves the following three steps. First, fusion of protoplasm between two motile or non-motile gametes called plasmogamy fusion of two nuclei called karyogamy, and third, meiosis in zygote resulting in haploid spores. When a fungus reproduces sexually, 
two haploid hyphae of compatible mating types come together and fuse. In some fungi, the fusion of two haploid cells immediately result in diploid cells 2N. However, in other fungi, Ascomycetes and Basidiomycetes, an intervening dikaryotic state that is N plus N that is two nuclei per cell occurs. Such a condition is called a dikaryon and the phase is called dikaryophase of fungus. Later, the parental nuclei fuse and the cells become diploid. The morphology of the mycelium, mode of spore formation and fruiting bodies form the basis for the division of the kingdom into various classes. 2.3.1 Phycomycetes Members of Phycomycetes are found in aquatic habitats and on decaying wood in moist and damp places or as obligate parasites on plants. The mycelium is aseptate and cynocytic. Asexual reproduction takes place by zoospores, motile, or by aplanospores, non-motile. These spores are endogenously produced in sporangium. A zygospore is formed by fusion of two gametes. These gametes are similar in morphology, isogamous, or dissimilar, anisogamous, or oogamous. Some common examples are mucor, rhizopus, the bread mold mentioned earlier, and albugo, the parasitic fungi on mustard. 2.3.2 Ascomycetes Commonly known as sac fungi, the ascomycetes are mostly multicellular, for example, penicillium, or rarely unicellular, for example, yeast saccharomyces. They are saprophytic decomposers, parasitic or coprophilus, that is growing on dung. Mycelium is branched and septate. The asexual spores are conidia, produced exogenously on the special mycelium called conidiophores. Conidia on germination produce mycelium. Sexual spores are called ascospores, which are produced endogenously in sac like esci, singular ascus. These esci are arranged in different types of protein bodies called escocarps. Some examples are aspergillus, claviceps, and neurospora. Neurospora is extensively used in biochemical and genetic work. Many members like morals and truffles are edible and are considered delicacies. 2.3.3 Basidiomycetes Commonly known forms of Basidiomycetes are mushrooms, bracket fungi or puffballs. They grow in soil, on logs and tree stumps and in living plant bodies as parasites, for example, rust and smuts. The mycelium is branched and septate. The asexual spores are generally not found, but vegetative reproduction by fragmentation is common. The sex organs are absent, but plasmogamy is brought by fission of two vegetative or somatic cells of different strains or genotypes. The resultant structure is dikaryotic, which ultimately gives rise to basidium. Karyogamy and meiosis takes place in basidium, producing four basidiospores. The basidiospores are exogenously produced in the basidium. The basidia are arranged in fruiting bodies called basidiocarps. Some examples and common members are agaricus mushroom, astilago smut, and paxinia rust fungus. 2.3.4 Deuteromycetes Commonly known as imperfect fungi because only the asexual or vegetative phases of this fungi are known. When the sexual forms of these fungi were discovered, they were moved into classes they rightly belong to. It is also possible that the asexual and vegetative stage have been given one name and placed under deuteromycetes and the sexual stage another name that is placed under another class. Later, when the linkages were established, the fungi were correctly identified and moved out of the deuteromycetes. Once perfect, sexual stages of the members of deuteromycetes were discovered, they were often moved to ascomycetes and basidiomycetes. The deuteromycetes will be produced only by asexual spores known as conidia. The mycelium is septate and branched. Some members are saprophytes or parasites, while a large number of them are decomposers of litter and help in mineral cycling. Some examples are alternaria, kletotrichum, and trichoderma. 2.4 Kingdom Plantae Kingdom Plantae includes all eukaryotic chlorophyll-containing organisms 
commonly called plants. A few members are partially heterotrophic, such as insectivorous plants or parasites. Bladderwort and Venus flytrap are examples of insectivorous plants and Cuscata is a parasite. The plant cells have a eukaryotic structure with prominent chloroplast and a cell wall mainly made of cellulose. You will study the eukaryotic cell structure in detail in chapter 8. Plantae includes algae, bryophytes, heredophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Life cycle of plants has two distinct phases the diploid sporophytic and the haploid nematophytic that alternate with each other. The lengths of the haploid and diploid phases and whether these phases are free living or dependent on others vary among different groups in plants. This phenomenon is called alternation of generation. You will study further details of this kingdom in chapter 3. 2.5 Kingdom Animalia This kingdom is characterized by heterotrophic eukaryotic organisms that are multicellular and their cells lack cell walls. They directly or indirectly depends on plants for food. They digest their food in an internal cavity and store food reserves as glycogen or fat. Their mode of nutrition is holozoic by ingestion of food. They follow a definite growth pattern and grow into adults that have a definite shape and size. Higher forms show elaborate sensory and neuromotor mechanisms. Most of them are capable of locomotion. The sexual reproduction is by copulation of male and female followed by embryological development. Salient features of various phyla are described in chapter 4. 2.6 Viruses, Pyroids and Lichens In the five kingdom classification of Whittaker, there is no mention of some acellular organisms like viruses and viroids and lichens. These are briefly introduced here. All of us have suffered the ill effects of common cold or flu. Now what effects viruses can have on us even if we do not associate it with our condition? Viruses did not find a place in classification since they are not truly living. If we understand living as those organisms that have a cell structure, the viruses are known cellular organisms that are characterized by having an inert crystalline structure outside the living cell. Once they enter a cell, they take over the machinery of the host cell to replicate themselves, killing the host. Would you call viruses living or non-living? Virus means venom or poisonous fluid. Mitri Ivanovsky in 1892 recognized certain microbes as casual organisms of the mosaic disease of tobacco. These were found to be smaller than bacteria because they passed through the bacteria-proof filters. M.W. Benjenik, in 1898, demonstrated that the extract of the infected plants of tobacco could cause infection in healthy plants and named the new pathogen virus and called the fluid as contagium vivium fluidum, that is, infectious living fluid. W.M. Stanley, in 1935, showed that viruses could be crystallized and crystals consist largely of proteins. They are inert outside their specific host cells. Viruses are obligate parasites. In addition to proteins, viruses also contain genetic material that could be either RNA or DNA. No virus contains both RNA and DNA. A virus is a nucleoprotein and the genetic material is infectious. In general, viruses that infect plants have single-stranded RNA and viruses that infect animals have either single or double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA. Bacterial viruses or bacteriophages that is, viruses that infect the bacteria are the usually double-stranded DNA viruses. The protein coat called capsid, made of small subunits called capsomeres, protects the nucleic acid. These capsomeres are arranged in helical or polyhedral geometric forms. Viruses cause diseases like mumps, smallpox, herpes, and influenza. AIDS in humans is also caused by a virus. In plants, the symptoms can be mosaic formation, leaf rolling and curling, yellowing and vein clearing, dwarfing and stunted growth. Thyroids In 1971, T.O. Diener discovered a new infectious agent that was smaller than viruses and caused potato spindle tuber diseases. It was found to be a free RNA. It lacked the protein coat that is found in viruses, hence the name viroid. The RNA of the viroid 
was of low molecular weight. Prions In modern medicine, certain infectious neurological diseases were found to be transmitted by an agent consisting of abnormally folded protein. The agent was smaller in size to viruses. These agents were called prions. The most notable diseases caused by prions are bovine spongiform encephalopathy that is BSC commonly called mad cow disease in cattle and its analogous variant CR Jacob disease CJD in humans lichens lichens are symbiotic associations that is mutually useful associations between algae and fungi the algal component is known as phycobiont and fungal component as my- mycobiont which are autotrophic and heterotrophic respectively algae prepare food for fungi and fungi provide shelter and absorb mineral nutrients and water for its partner so close is their association that if one saw lichen in nature one would never imagine that they had two different organism within them lichens are very good pollution indicators they do not grow in polluted areas the chapter is completed thank you for listening keep working hard